Now, a lot has been made of which zone you should train in. Mostly, zone two is good. Zone three is bad, the gray zone that must be avoided. But why? What really is the reason for this? And should you really be avoiding this gray zone? So let's start by examining the question we're asking here. Is training in zone three bad? Well, first, an explanation of what we mean by zone three. When we talk about intensities of training, zone two would be the aerobic training zone. That is the zone where you can and do generate most of your energy needs aerobically, mostly using fat as your fuel source. Zone four would be a higher intensity where you're working a lot harder and producing a significant amount of lactate and using far more carbs as a fuel source. Whereas zone three sits between these zones. It's not so hard as to be unsustainable, but it's not an easy cruise either. It feels like you're doing work. It is a level that feels challenging, but not painful, comfortably hard. A novice athlete, they could probably sustain this kind of intensity for around 20 to 30 minutes. And for your average age grouper, probably between one to two hours. For a good age grouper, perhaps between three to four hours. And then for an elite long distance athlete, they can and do in fact sustain this sort of intensity for around eight to nine hours over the course of an Ironman. So why then is it called the gray zone? Well, the main reason is that the recovery time from working at this kind of intensity is far longer than that, say, working at zone two. And also that recovery period or time is less predictable. For some athletes, it may be a case of just a few hours to recover from, whereas for others, it may be a few days. And actually trying to get any constructive training in during that recovery period is pretty darn hard, if near impossible. So for that reason, many coaches actually prescribe zone two aerobic training, where the aerobic gains are substantial, but the workload and recovery time are more predictable. Now they may, on top of that, then prescribe some intervals or tempo sessions working in zone three or zone four, but they're manageable blocks where the recovery times are more predictable. But then their athlete heads out for their training session, their long ride, their long run, their group ride or group run, and they start dipping in and out of that gray zone. Or worse, they end up doing the entire thing in the gray zone. And this is where that work recovery balance of their training program can fall totally out of whack because the next time they're actually required to go hard in their training, they can't because they're tired. Or even on the easier rides or runs, they're fatigued from having gone too hard elsewhere. Everything just ends up a little gray. And for this reason, zone three has been banished to the naughty step. Don't go into zone three. Don't bother with the gray zone. Go hard or go easy. Nothing in between. But this is very much not the case. Zone three training is not bad. In fact, it might be your best training zone. Keep watching as I'll explain why. But before I do, if you're enjoying today's video, please do give it a like below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already, well, give us some love, subscribe to the channel and make sure you don't miss any of our future videos. Well, as I've said already, an average age grouper could probably hold this zone three intensity for around one to two hours, which is pretty much an entire sprint distance triathlon at that kind of level. And then for a very good age grouper, they can hold this sort of intensity for around three to four hours, which is a standard distance triathlon, or even most of a 70.3 distance triathlon. And then for elite long distance athlete, they're probably able to hold this for an entire iron distance triathlon. So zone three, is literally race pace. And obviously we want to make sure that we are training at the pace that we want to race. Also, zone three is fantastic for building muscular and strength endurance. So there are a lot of benefits to training and working at this kind of intensity. So what gives? Should we or shouldn't we train at zone three? Is there even a gray zone? Well, the truth is that most triathletes should actually be building up to doing a substantial amount of zone three training within their training program by the pointy end of their season for their goal race. But this is where the confusion and that gray zone rule can come in because the amount of zone three work we can do depends heavily on our fitness. So early in the season when our fitness may be okay, but our tolerance is a little lower, zone three training may be very time inefficient because it takes a lot out of us and therefore also the amount of recovery time is increased quite substantially. You're probably far better off actually spending more time working in zone two 
aerobically with some shorter and more controlled efforts into zone three and four. But the problem with zone two work is that because it is that much slower, it can feel like you're crawling along, whereas zone three work, you feel like you're really getting fitter from it. And so many athletes jump into their training and jump into this zone three work, but then effectively end up chasing their tails for the entire seasons. They do these hard sessions, but then are unable to back up those sessions upon other sessions and effectively build up their training volume. So they are advised, and correctly so, to avoid zone three work, to allow them to build up this aerobic fitness and tolerance to the training loads. And by strictly avoiding zone three, they're able to build up the training volume over time. And also an added benefit to this is that it reduces the risk of injury whilst they are building up the volume. But as you get fitter and closer to your goal race, where you're going to be required to hold this kind of intensity for sustained periods, you are going to want to start doing zone three work within your training. Now this needs to be controlled, some intervals, probably starting out with some short intervals with some long recoveries between. And over time, as you start to get used to those and fitter, you start doing longer intervals with shorter recoveries until you're finally building these into your tempo runs and rides with nice long sustained intervals at that intensity. Still with me? Well, let's try and sum this up for you a little bit then. Now, zone three is obviously a very important intensity to train at and get comfortable at if you want to race triathlon well. But it should be second tier in the pyramid. You don't want to start building it up until that base layer of the pyramid is well established already. So don't be scared of zone three, don't avoid it, but equally, don't get carried away and start doing all your training at zone three, even if it does feel rather good because when you're required to do some of the higher intensities, you just simply can't because you're fatigued from all that zone three work that you've done. So I hope today's video has been helpful, maybe just cleared up a few of the misconceptions around that gray zone of training. Let us know if you've got any more questions in the comments section down below. Maybe let us know how much zone three training you do and how you feel about zone three training. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. See you next time.